their faith arise In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe And help my unbelief, I choose to trust you No matter what I feel, let faith arise Oh, let faith arise For my champion's not dead, he is alive Oh, and he already knows my every need Surely he will come and rescue me
Ridge Central Coast. <laughs> What's up, everybody? How's everybody feeling? Awesome. I like that. We're going to invite you guys to stand with us as we worship today. We had a great time first service. I just I felt the spirit. That was awesome. We did, uh, we did Waymaker. We're not doing it with this one. Not that you needed to know that. But, but yeah, so we're going we're gonna to go ahead. Father God, we just pray that we just allow ourselves to just be led by you, God, and just, Father God, just let us hear your voice today, God. We just want to worship you. We want to praise you, God. Father God, allow the people who need to hear the message today, God, that although we may feel like we're broken, God, you still call us a masterpiece, God. We're your masterpiece and just allow us to be molded by you, God. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. count on one thing the same God that never fails will not fail me now you won't fail me now in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things out you're working all things out yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Oh, yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Oh, yes, I will. Go 
I've carried a burden too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. And I see it now, I'm laying it down, and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall in the grace. I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again. Redemption, the prize for my heart. And I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend. All I know is I need you. I run to the Good. Well, again, we just want to welcome you guys to Bridge Central Coast. Don't sit down. We're going to keep worshiping. But again, if we can, really quick, give somebody a hug next to you. Welcome them. And then Bridge Juniors, if you guys can come up so we can pray for you, 8 to 13 years old, that'd be awesome. Yeah, buddy. You're the man, dude. Good. Oh. 
Nice. How's it going, man? Dang, you guys are so many people. Huh. <laughs> All right, good. Woo! Come on. Good. Come on, we believe in the next generation, amen? Come on, hey, come on, dude, you're good. Yeah. Good. Again, we have three heartbeats here at the bridge. Number one, we feel called to be a bridge that connects people to Jesus. Number two, we feel called to be a bridge that connects the generations young and old. And three, we feel called to be a bridge of unity to the region. And so, again, in God's word um, with Israelites, it says um, the sad thing is after God's people crossed over the Jordan, it says as time went on, it says that the generation to follow knew not of the Lord or of his good deeds. And so for us, we don't ever want to let that happen. Amen? We want to yell his deeds from generation after generation. So again, if you can, if you can extend your hands, we're going to pray for all these young people as well as their teachers. God, I thank you, God, for this generation. God, again, we speak over their lives. God, may they be young people from a young age. God, that know your voice. God, that stand with boldness and conviction. God, and faith. God, may they be young people, God, that stand and live their lives based upon what they know is true. Your word, God, who you are, Jesus, not based upon what they see or what they feel, God. And so we pray today, God, freedom over their lives, boldness over their lives, supernatural confidence over their lives. God, may they always know, God, that they are children of yours. God, may they always know you, not just know about you. So we ask, Holy Spirit, open their hearts today to receive all that you have for them. God, I pray for every single teacher. God, every single young person that's already in their class. God, I pray, God, may they encounter you today and leave this place different than when they came in. God, we bless this generation. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on, let's keep worshiping. Amen. Come on. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Sing Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, oh, you are worthy of every breath we could ever be. We live for you.
Carmelo and amen? Come on. Carmelo just jumped on board January 1st with us, so he is now pastor of the Bridge Central Coast. Woo! Um, it's been cool. It's been almost two years knowing him, and this whole last year of just, again, doing life together, discipling him, showing him, showing him God's word, and just, there's a call on his life. There's a call, and on, on, on just, he's just on fire. He you know, spends time with Jesus, and so the beauty of that is, again, he gets to come in and pour into our young people every single week, and so, um, again, our heart here at the bridge is not that we have one senior leader who's building this castle, Amen? Our heart is that we have multiple leaders building the kingdom. And so, again, we don't, I, I'm not a big dude on titles. Um, I'm just stoked that he knows my name, that he's called, called to use me. And so, again, I, I don't think revival's happening from the pulpit. I think revival's going to happen when the body of Christ rises up and carries his spirit everywhere we go. You know, and so, again, um, how we do, we believe there's a call in his life. We're going to celebrate that at the end of the month. Um, but, again, Carmelo's bringing 
tithe message today because how many of you know we've been blessed to give? Amen? Amen. And trust God with our finances. If you can, just receive this word. Amen? Amen. Again, guys, how are everyone doing this morning? Woo-hoo! Come on, somebody. Again, so just what I'm doing up here is sharing a tithe and offering. And again, I was just praying like, Lord, what do you want me to share? What do you want me to speak? And the same thing with Pastor Justice said right now. Carmel, just share your test. Who are, what have I done in your life? I said, all right, Lord, I just trust you. Trust you with all my heart. So I'm going to go to my favorite passage of scripture and share that with you guys. And it's, and it's Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And the Lord gave me three words. Trust, know, and believe. Trust. Trust is knowing, having that complete reliance. And not only that, knowing. Come on, somebody. Knowing. If you knew. Come on. So every single one of you guys, if you knew where everything that you had came from, breath in your lungs, legs to walk, hands to work, everything. If, come on, somebody. If you knew. I'm, I'm telling you guys right now. Trust. Know. Not just like what we say at time. Not know about him. But come on, somebody. Do you know him? Do you know who provides all your needs according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus? Do you know? And then again, come on, somebody, that you have to believe. Come on, somebody. Trust. No, and that is faith. Believing. It is impossible. Come on, said The word of God said it is impossible without faith to please God. Amen. Come on, so We got to know where it comes from. Amen. And again, so I just want to share this testimony again where Pastor Justin was just sharing. I mean, it was probably even about three weeks ago now. Um, I was in transition, I, like he, he let you guys know that you know, the Lord called me into ministry, and I'm just like, I can't do it. Come on, son, but I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Amen? I can. I can, but through him, I can. Amen? So again, going back to the trust, I was, we're going through all of our finances, just writing everything down. We're, we have four beautiful children, you know, my marriage, we're a family of sick. Lord, how's this going to happen? It's not making no sense. And I'm, I was on a night schedule, and I was up probably around 10 o'clock in the morning where I should be asleep at that time. And I just, I was just restless and I couldn't sleep. And we're going through all of our finances. I'm with my wife. Like, this doesn't make sense. This doesn't make sense. Come on, somebody, let me tell you guys right now what I did in front of my wife and everybody. You know what I did? I put down the pen and said, all I said is like, Lord, I trust you. Lord, I trust you. Lord, I know you are my way maker. The same thing, I trust you. I laid it down. Let me just tell every single one of you guys right now what the Lord did. Come on, somebody. I wanted to be there for my family. I worked seven, I was like work seven days on, seven days off, meaning I would work every other week where I would miss church. I would pray, Lord, I want to be at church with my family every single week. Lord, I want this. I want this. Come on, somebody. Any door that the Lord opens, no man can shut. Amen. Come on, somebody. He opened the door for me, and not only that, man, I'm able to be there now with my family. I want to be there to raise my young son, my daughter to be a husband to my family all because I trusted I knew who I'm and I believe in him amen and that's what I'm telling every single one of you guys if you trust and you know if you know that you guys know in your heart that he provides all things for you guys you guys may be a time in your season right now like it just doesn't make sense I'm telling you brothers and sisters trust know and believe amen he's a good God amen so again we have four ways where you could give today um you could do it in person we have buckets in the back you could do that. You could do it by mail, online, and again, on our app. Amazing app. Get that app. Everything stay connected with us. Amen? We got to be the body of Christ encouraging one another. Know what's going on. Don't be left out. And if you don't, come to every single, any one of us, leaders or whoever, and we'll give you a hand with that app. Amen? So I'm going to pray right now over the tithe and offerings. Amen? Father God, I just thank you, Father God, for this. For you are so good, Father God. And just right now, Father God, we trust you, Father God. Father God, I'm even praying right now. Someone, Father God, they're probably dealing with finances, Father God, where it's just hard for them, Father God. Holy Spirit, I just thank you, Father God. You open up the floodgates of heaven, Father God, and pour out a blessing, Father God, where they can know that they can only give you, Jesus, the honor and glory that you deserve, Father God. I just thank you, Father God. Give them a revelation of who you are even deeper, Father God. So I just thank you for every person that is giving, Father God, right now, Father God. And again, your word says, Father God, that you love a cheerful giver father god so i thank you father god that when we give back it's already yours we're just giving back to you father god what you gave to us what you entrusted for us father god so i thank you father god what you're gonna do in and through every single one of our my brothers and sisters today in jesus my name everybody said amen Amen. pastor justin man our young people get that every week that's pretty amazing amen come on yeah, if you need to be saved on Wednesday nights, you can come too. Amen? Just sit in the back, give your life to Jesus, call it good. You guys ready to run? Here we go.
I have five minutes. Just kidding. We have like 30, so we're making it happen. Um, Again, we're going to be in Acts 27 for the next few weeks. We're going to break down Acts 27 and Acts 28. Um, It's one of my most favorite passages in Scripture of Paul in the midst of a storm, ends up on the island of Malta, and then God, he gets in a shipwreck, but what he thought was a shipwreck, God set him up for revival. Amen? So we're going to break this down. You guys are going to know this passage the back of your hand. We're going to start in verse 20 today. Acts 27, verse 20. So again, I hope you have your Bibles. If you don't, no condemnation right now, but if you do, underline, circle, put squares, write notes in it, amen? Because when when storms happen in your life, it's important that you look back on this word, on this, in this book, and you're reminded of who God is and what he's done. You're reminded of his promises, amen? We talked about it first thing. I don't want you guys just to come in and eat on Sunday mornings, Amen? Because otherwise you're going to starve the rest of the week. It's not just about what we say from the pulpit. Right? I pray pray you go home and challenge me. I pray you go home and you look through scripture and say, man, is this Yahoo have it all together? Was that legit or what? Right? I pray that you go home and that you have a living, breathing, daily walk with Jesus Christ outside these four walls. And that you don't just come in on Sunday mornings and check the box off. Amen? I pray you guys go and you, and you make this real in your life, that you know him, not just know about him. Amen? Come on. Acts 27, starting verse 20, it says this. It says, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days, and the storm continued raging. How many of you guys feel that right now? Right? Be honest. 2020, just rolling into 2021, right? You're like, what the heck? Right? You were done. Right? It's just rolling on, right? When the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. I had two people reach out to me last night and this morning, just lost hope. That's why we're here. That's why we're praising the name of Jesus and standing on his word and remembering who he is and what he's done. Amen? Verse 21, after they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before the men and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now, say but now. now. Come on. I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and to whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. Verse 25, so keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Amen? Let's pray. Holy Spirit. Again, I thank you for your presence. God, we do just what we sang today. God, you are worthy, God, not just of our our song, but of our lives, God. And so today, right now, God, I ask, open up our hearts to your word. Holy Spirit, we need a revelation from you today. God, write your word upon our hearts. God, let us leave this place different than when we came in. God, fill us with the power of your spirit today. Fill us with your joy. God, with your hope, God, with your, God, life, Jesus. So as we leave this place, remind us, God, we carry your presence everywhere we go. God, so as darkness seems to abound, God, remind us that grace abounds much more. And may we be your light of the world, God. So we love you, we praise you for all that you are. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, but now. Come on. Amen. I always say is turn to your other neighbor, your second choice, and say, God loves you too. He really does. You can whisper, I'll choose you next week, I promise, right? Um, no, this is, this is probably one of my most favorite scriptures um, in the Bible, passage of scripture, because again, especially when it's hard, especially when things in my life are, I'm facing trials or hardships or what I see in my life in circumstances or situations isn't lining up with what he said. How many of you guys can relate? Amen? Not one of you. That's the wrong place. Good. Three of you guys are saved. That's amazing. All right? So again, like again, we, we say it all the time. We don't want to be people that live based upon how we feel or what we see. We want to be people that live based upon what we know is true. And his word has stood the test of time, amen? We want to be people that stand upon his word. And so again, every single week as we're going through scripture, my heart is not that you just hear it. 
But my heart is, again, that you go home, that you study it. And so you might be in here today, and you're like, dude, how do I study? Man, every time I try to read the Bible, I just fall asleep, right? You don't have to raise your hand, right? But like, again, and so, again, I want to give you guys practical, like, insight. Like, we use an acronym here at the bridge called SOAP. It means scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So again, what does that mean? It means we read scripture out loud, amen? Speak God's word out loud over your heart, right? Over your life. Don't do, I'm just reading it quietly in my heart. Speak it out loud, amen? And I promise you, it'll, it'll do something in your heart that only God's word can do. It'll build your spirit, man. Read it over and over and over. Ask the Holy Spirit, God, show me. Oh, observation. God, show me what you want to show me in your word. Show me what you want to speak to me about today. A, application. God, how do I apply this to my life right now, in this moment, today? right? I say it every single week. It's not by chance that you're here. You might think, oh, dude, they drugged me here today. That's why I'm here, right? You might be in here today, and you're like, I just, uh, man, I had, a, I had a rough night last night, right? So I wanted to feel better about myself, so I came to church today. Maybe that's you, right? Don't elbow anybody, right? But again, reality it is, is, man, God's word has ability to change our hearts, and so when we read it, we want to say, God, this isn't just to make us warm and fuzzy and to feel better, God, how do I apply what I've read to my life right now, today, in this moment? If I'm here for a reason, what, a, God, Holy Spirit, ask the Lord today, God, speak through this guy, right? In between his rabbit trails and everything, God, speak through him to me so that I can apply what we hear today to my life, so that I can leave this place different than when I came in, amen? And P, prayer. Pray God's word over your heart, Amen? Pray it over your life. Let it be that guiding light that guides you in your life every single day. Amen? We're going to break this down. Here we go. Some context really quick. Um, Paul has this burning desire to go to Rome, right? And to proclaim the gospel to Caesar and all those in Rome. But he has no idea of God's actual plan to get him there. How do we relate to that? How many of you guys' life sometimes you think it's going to go one way and it goes uh, totally different? Amen? And I thought last year was going to be totally different. Man, I did. Let me tell you, even at the end of the year, it was a massive blessing. God answered every single prayer that I put in my prayer journal. He just did it a totally different way than I thought he was going to do it. Right? And that's what Paul, Paul wants to go to Rome. And so he thinks he's going to be able to go a certain way. God has another plan. He's taken as a prisoner, put on a ship that shipwrecks. Amen? Amen? And so that's where we're going to pick up in verse 9. Acts 27, verse 9. Here we go. It says, Much time had been lost, and sailing had already become dangerous, because by now it was after the Day of Atonement. So Paul warned them, Men, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. That makes sense, amen? Why are you going to listen to the preacher guy? I would listen to the, the sailor, right? Right? The first thing that I believe God wants to write on our hearts today is this. Number one, be careful who you let guide your ship. Amen? Be careful who you let guide your ship. What do I mean by that? You see, Paul warns them, don't sail. But do they listen to him? No. Right? You see, Paul represents God's voice in the story. And maybe some of us in here today are in the midst of a storm in our life and you're listening to every other voice, every other thing, every other podcast, every other help, help, self-help book, and you're, li you're not listening to God. You're not listening to his word or his voice in your life. And you're like, why am I in the midst of a storm? Why is all this stuff happening to me? I just want to tell you, just real talk in here, right? Man, sometimes we over-spiritualize all the negative that happens. Man, I'm sleeping with my boyfriend or girlfriend. I'm living unholy in my life. I'm cheating. I'm doing all this kind of stuff. And I'm wondering, man, the devil's just after me. Everything keeps messing up. Things are going bad. No, you're just making stupid decisions, right? You're just choosing to live not how God's calling you to live. Amen? Let's stop blaming the devil and just start making better decisions. Let's look to him, right? Be careful who you let guide your ship. Real relationships, right, which I pray we have. 
Like the body of Christ is so important because real relationships, if you have people in your life that love you enough that are able to look you in the eye and say, hey, man, what are you doing? Why are you living the way that you're living? What's going on, right? And again, I, I'm not saying that like to, maybe you're in here today and you're, you're in the midst of a storm, you're in a hard place, in a dark place in your life and it wasn't your fault. I'm not saying that callously and saying, hey, you're making bad decisions. I'm saying, you know if you are, amen? But if you're not just like Paul, Paul didn't ask to be put on a ship as a prisoner. He didn't ask to be shipwrecked. And he even told these guys, hey, don't sail. It's going to be bad for us. And they're like, nah, preacher boy, here, have a seat, right? That might be your reality today. You're in a tough place and it wasn't your fault. This message is for you today because there's hope at the end. When they say, man, we lost all hope, you might be in here today where you're like, dude, I have no hope. There's two words that come after that, but now, amen? God has a plan. So again, if you're in here and you're just living unholy, man, my, God is sifting his church right now. He is separating the, those who say they believe and those who actually believe and are living it out. And my encouragement for you, the beauty of the gospel, is Jesus says, just turn. Go sin no more. Amen? Come to me. Right? And so for us, again, you and I can never be good enough or we can never earn it or deserve it enough to earn his love or to be perfect enough to make it to heaven. And that's why we need a savior. It's not about what you and I have to do. It's what he's already done and living in a response to that. Amen? Come on. Number one, we have to be careful who we let guide our ship. We don't want to be people who live based upon what we see or what we feel, but we want to be people who live based upon what we know is true. And I think sometimes, like before, before I think there's going to be times in your life when God tells you to stick it out. There's going to be times in your life when God tells you to do something or to continue moving forward, and it's not going to make sense. And I just want to encourage you, be obedient, amen? Because obedience is our job. Outcome is his, amen? Outcome is the Lord's. He's not asking you and I to whine and complain of the sacrifice that you're making right now because he already made the greatest sacrifice. He's just asking you and I to say yes, to be obedient. And so maybe your life right now, you're like, man, God, I can't see beyond these, this, this storm. I can't see beyond these clouds. God, I have no hope. I don't know where to go. I'm just telling you, but you feel in your heart that God's telling you, stick it out. Keep moving forward. Keep trusting me. Keep your eyes focused on me. But God, it doesn't seem like it's ever going to change. It doesn't seem like I'm ever going to get out of this hole that I'm in. And he keeps telling you, just trust just keep your eyes focused on me. Just keep moving forward. I truly believe that's for somebody today. I want to remember, I want, I want you to remember, I want to speak to you and over you today that obedience is our job. It's your job. Outcome is his. If you take that step of faith to trust and be obedient to his word, I promise you, you'll look back. I know for my life, I've looked back so many times and been like, dang, God, you were there all along. And we said yes to you, but it didn't even make sense. Everybody told us we were crazy. And yet, look what you did. And there's only one explanation, and that's your faithfulness. Amen? Trust him today, and be careful who you let guide your ship. Let's keep going. Verse 13, when a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity, so they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. And before long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. How many of you guys know sin is fun for a season, right? If we're honest, let's be honest in here, right? But it only lasts for so long. And right now, I don't know if you've noticed, but there is a lot of darkness being exposed, Right? I was talking with a buddy the other day, and I was like, man, he's like, man, there's just, I, I don't understand how so much evil people are getting away with it. I'm like, they're not. The God I know is just. And I promise we're going to stand on that. We might not see it on mainstream media, but man, stuff is going dark all over the world right now. And darkness is being exposed. Evil is being exposed. Amen? 
And again, I just want to encourage you. My, my heart in saying that for you guys today is I think for a long time we thought that it was okay to kind of straddle the fence and ride the line of holiness. It's not. You might have secret sin and junk in your life. Man, lay it at the foot of the cross today. Amen? Leave this place and leave it on the floor. And choose holiness right now. Because again, we want God to move. We want God to judge the evil and to, for him to be just. But he can't judge the world until he first judges his people in his house. Amen? He's going to judge us first. And I don't know about you growing up. I remember, man, I grew up in a good little Christian home. I was good for a little while. And then I kind of went on a little rebellious streak. And it seemed like every time I stepped out and did something, my friends would get away with it for like all the time. Man, and the first time I would choose to like color outside the lines or like do something, dude, I'd get caught, right? My dad was a peace officer, man. You know how many times I came home and he's like, breathe, right? <laughs> dad, don't waste it. I'm not, you know, I mean, I think of all the, the dumb things I did. It was only God's hand of grace that kept me alive. It really was. And to think now, I mean, like, you guys, uh, some of you guys know my story, some of you guys don't. Like, I went through, thank God it was only a few, few years. But I went through some, some pretty deep, dark places, which almost ended up with me putting a bullet in my head because I didn't want to mess up anymore. And God brought me out of that. And now is using me by his grace alone to, to share his good news and hope for those that felt in the same place that I was. Like that theme constantly runs. If you, if you, I, I feel like I'm a broken record every single Sunday because I'm saying, hey, trust that he is who he says he is. Don't give up. Continue to give him everything, right? And that's that vein that goes through my life because that's what he did for me. And every single one of you has, has a story. God has been there for you when no one else was. He's been faithful when it seemed hopeless, and so I just want to encourage you guys, there's power in our testimony, amen? And, and, and again, for us, sin is fun for a season. I remember growing up, it was like the example that Louis Giglio used all the time. He said, sin is like a postcard of like this resort that you want to go to, right? There's palm trees, the, the, the place looks beautiful, right? The sand is like clean and white, like the, the, the water looks all warm. There's like dolphins and rainbows, whatever, right? Um, Sin's like that, but what you don't see is it's cropped. Because on the other side, the picture's been cropped. You don't see the landfill, right? Or the airport that's right next door. Or um, all the shacks and different stuff that's right there. Or the police station, right? Or whatever's right next door. Like, you don't see all that. And so, again, I'm saying that for you today because I want to encourage you guys, just like what it says, when a gentle south wind began to blow, they saw their opportunity, so they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore. But before long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeast Easter swept down from the island. You might be getting away with stuff in your life right now and it might feel like a gentle breeze. But I promise you, God is sifting his church. And before long, if you are living in sin, you're gonna be in the middle of a storm. And it's not gonna be the devil's just attacking you. It's going to be because you're making poor decisions, right? So my heart for you today is just turn. God, what are you, what are you, God, you're doing something in my life right now that I don't see or that I don't understand. So show me, God, I can't control. We always say, control what you can and trust him with the rest, amen? You and I can't control everybody else. And I think right now there is so much outside of our control. And I think we were so used to having everything, we can control everything so we're not hurt. <laughs> so everything's good, right? I can protect myself. Man, this last year has been, dude, I have no control at all. Just like us meeting, man, I can tell, we are getting so much like, we're getting a lot for gathering together. And I, again, we're continually praying, we're looking at the numbers, we're trying to be good stewards of what God's given us. But I, 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 the reality of just thinking of like, number one, it says fear is not from the Lord. I'm not gonna live in fear. Number two, I believe God's still on the throne and he's faithful. Number three, at the end of the day, no matter how cautious or careful you and I are, man, 
We don't control everybody else, amen? It was like that meme Katie shared with me the other day. It's like, um, it's like, thank you, plexiglass, for protecting me from being spit on by the cash register guy. Even though he just put everything into my thing, like, <laughs> right? Man, I'm so glad I can't spit on you, but oh, I like these. These are awesome, right? Here we go, go right? And you're going through. You go to the gas station pump, same thing, right? You can't control that. And so again, right now, it's, I think like this whole last season has been so much about surrender. God, do I really believe that you are who you say you are? Do I really trust? And if I do, and like we've been sharing every single week and I'll keep sharing, at the end of the day, if I believe God's sovereign, if I believe that he knit me together in my mother's womb, that he has a plan and a purpose for my life, then I know at the end of the day, he knows my very last breath and the very last day that I have on this little planet. And so I'm not going to stress out on when that day is, amen? Because as long as there's breath in my lungs, I'm going to keep living. And let me tell you, the last month, like, man, Pastor Phil, amazing, turned around, I think on Friday, Sherry called, all of his lungs miraculously totally cleared up. They should be back, amen? Um, but again, for us, my heart for us is again in the midst of fear and chaos and crisis that you and I can be different, that we can look different, that we can stand firm with hope and joy and peace because we know at the end of the day, I know where I'm going. Aren't you afraid of dying? Dude, not really because I know where I'm going. Aren't you afraid of leaving your family? Not really because God loves them more than I do and he's way better at providing, right? He's got their back, right? Or aren't you afraid of getting others sick? Dude, I'm really not. Because I'm just trying to use common sense. If I have a fever and not feeling good, I'm not going to go hang out with all y'all. Amen? Right? It's just trusting that we are living responsibly, that we're living right. Amen? And again, does stuff still happen that's outside of our control? Yes, totally. My uncle, two days ago, was fighting for his life. He loves Jesus. He's faithful. And my dad called. He's fighting for his life. And so... I texted him, and I just said, oh, again, you can't visit anybody in the hospital right now. Um, so I just texted him. He's got an old flip phone, um, so his kid had to bring in the text or whatever. And I'm so thankful. Man, prayer is powerful, amen? And I just spoke God's word. I spoke life into him, and I spoke in him, and they, there was so much fear in his family. And two days later, we got the call. He just says, I feel more terrific than I ever have. I'm, I'm, I know God's healing me. I feel the powers of your prayer. And and they're letting me leave tomorrow. And we're like, come on, amen? So again, uh, my heart for us is that we look different, amen? I think that was free. That wasn't really in my notes. So um, here we go, verse 15. It says, the ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind, so we gave way to it and were driven along. That, when I was reading it this week, God, what do you want to speak through that? I just felt like the Lord was just saying, be careful who you surround yourself with. Missionary dating doesn't work, amen? <laughs> Trust me, right? No matter how strong you might think you are, no matter how solid you are with the Lord, if you're surrounding yourself with people that aren't walking with Jesus or that, aren't, that are living in fear and anger and stuff like that, I promise you, over time, you will eventually be in that place as well. And again, let's, I want to I make it distinct. Like, I'm not saying don't go to be in the world. Does that make sense? Like, I don't want us to just get fat and happy Christian club in here. My heart is that we go out and shine for him out there, amen? I pray that we go out and we hang with people who are broken and people who are lost. Again, I don't want us all happy, put together people coming in these doors. I pray that the broken and the lost and the addicted and the hopeless walk through these doors. That's what it's about, amen? However, I also want you guys to be encouraged and to be accountable. Like, surround yourself with people who are going to hold you accountable, amen? Surround yourself with people who are going to speak life over you, who are going to remind you of God's faithfulness and his goodness and his word over your life so that when you don't have faith or you don't have strength to make it through the storm that you're battling, they're able to stand alongside you and say, hey, don't give up, get up, stop whining, right? Look to Jesus, he's faithful, he loves you, and he's still in your boat, and so am I, 
Amen? Like we need, that's why we say, again, we talk about Hebrews 10 says, don't forsake gathering together as many as made a habit of doing, but instead spur one another on to love and good deeds, especially as the day of Christ approaches. That's why we gather. Amen? Like, I'm not saying, again, like online for me was so hard. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. It was hard. Speaking to a wall and hoping that it got saved at the end of the day was hard. Amen? Like leading worship and again, don't, don't get me wrong. Like God was so amazing. Like I, I shared with you guys before, like we turned our little girl's playroom with American Girl dolls and Hello Kitty blankets into a mini studio to try and just broadcast online. We, we couldn't get all of our gear from the school because it was locked at the school for over a month. So we were like MacGyvered our way with duct tape and faith and made it happen, amen? Um, and there were some amazing times and amazing presence of God in that little room. Dude, I was stoked. Like, but it was still hard. And when we came back in finally, and we raised a hallelujah. That was the first song we did when we came back in. Dude, I was bawling, man. And I was like, God, never again am I gonna take for granted gathering together with the body of Christ. Amen? And let me tell you, because I'm not gonna go too political, but let me just tell you this. Against the Constitution, our, our president of the United States for the first time in history was banned, right? From speaking. Freedom of speech was banned, right? Tons of conservative voices banned right now. How genius is the enemy, right? Again, we, when we're able to be alert and look out for the strategy of the enemy, how genius is this? Most churches right now are online. And if you can ban the president of the United States, as we're all online, because they're, they're silencing us everywhere else, as we're online, they could say, we don't like your message. So you know what we're going to do? Done. Revolution happens because you and I do life together. And we speak truth. Amen? So again, like, <laughs> it, like I said, until they put us in chains, and may, I pray if they put me in chains, then some of you guys rise up and start teaching as well. Amen? Like, because again, like, there is nothing like laying hands on people and seeing God heal and do miraculous works in their lives. There's nothing like us coming in and be like, man, you're right, it was a heavy week, and I didn't have hope, but I forgot. I forgot that he's faithful. I forgot that he's still on the throne. I forgot that he still has a plan and a purpose. Amen? I forgot. There's something that happens when we come and we raise the name of Jesus. Darkness flees. Fear flees. Oppression flees. The chains of depression flees. Amen. And so again, that's the beauty. We're not just coming to feel good. Amen. We're coming to be encouraged to spur one another on to love and good deeds and remembering that our foundation is built upon the rock of Jesus Christ. No matter circumstance, situation, storms, giants, we know that he's already victorious. Amen. So what are you going to do? Take my life? Sweet. You're sending me to see Jesus? Dude, how much, if I can have this much power down here, how much power do you think I'm gonna have up there? Right, God, send me down. I wanna be that angel that kills 185,000 warriors. Let me do it, God. Come on, right? I wanna wake up those crazy guys in the middle of the night and let them encounter you, right? Send me, Jesus, right? He who is in us is greater than he who is in the world, amen? There's power when we gather together. Be careful who you surround yourself with. Amen. Verse 16. Gosh, I'm just going all over. Here we go. Verse 16. As we passed to the lee of a small island called Kata, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. So the men hoisted it aboard. Then they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together because they were afraid they would run aground on the sandbars of Sardis. They lowered the sea anchor and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargo overboard. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard. The second thing that I believe the Lord wants to write in our hearts today is this. Number two, always look to God first. Amen? Always look to God first. I think it's funny how sometimes, I think for us, if we're honest, in the middle of the storm, we look to every other voice and every other thing to help keep the boat together. And usually, when it's finally hopeless, it's then that we cry out to the Lord. Amen? Amen? I pray that you and I are people that when crisis happens in our lives, we look to him first, amen? And I pray not even just crisis. 
Why do we gather on Sunday mornings? Because it's the first of our week to say, God, we're giving you the first fruits of our week so that you'll bless it, so that we're reminded, God, of who you are and what you've done, so that we're not defeated as we're walking through the things that you have are going to put in front of us this week. Amen? Why do I give you my tithe and my offering, God, the first fruits of my finances? Because I'm saying, God, I trust you, right? I was talking to somebody this week, and he's like, man, I usually give God kind of the leftovers at the end of the month kind of deal, and I'm like, dude, that takes no faith. No wonder your faith sucks right? No wonder when stuff happens in your life, you fall apart. And he's like, well, what do you mean? I said, dude, it doesn't take any faith to give God leftovers. And you're living off of all of that and saying, oh, God, bless all of it. Instead of, it takes tons of faith to give God in the beginning and saying, God, thank you, God. I trust you that you are my provider, and I'm giving you the first fruits, the 10%, so that you'll bless the other 90, Right? Dave Ramsey talks about it. A lot of us, we like to live on, all, the, on all, all of it and ask God to bless the rest, right? Man, God, no, no, no. I'm gonna give you the first fruits of my life. Why do I spend time with Jesus first thing in the morning? I give him the first fruits of my day because my eyes are focused on you. Let me just tell you, if I'm reminded, God, that you love me, that I'm forgiven, that you forgave me, that you pulled me out of the mud, God, there's a really good chance that as I walk through my day, I'm not throwing stones at anybody else. And I'm walking with compassion because of what you've done for me. Amen? Give him your first fruits. Look to God first. Amen? Verse 20 says, When neither sun nor stars appeared for many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. And after they had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourselves this damage and loss. Ladies, don't go home and create wall art that says, men, you should have taken my advice. Amen? <laughs> don't post and say, oh, I have a new life first. It's amazing, right? Come on. Some of you guys are like, dude, I'm writing that down. That's amazing. Right? Um, he says, men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. You know, Katie brought up this week. It's a good example. Um, and this is, this is free. Uh, she was saying that in the midst of all this stuff going on, I don't know what you guys are praying about or thinking about or what you're watching, but again, there, from what we're seeing, there's a lot that's going on behind the scenes that, that we don't know, you know? And so um, this guy was talking this week and he was just sharing, hey, there's gonna be a lot of you at the end of the day, you know, a couple weeks from now when you turn around and, and things are exposed and you're like, you wanna, you're gonna wanna be like I told you so. I told you so. Why didn't you listen? Why did you sail? I told you so, right? And as I was reading that last night and just saying, God, is there anything else? It was, it was cool because the guy said, let's not be people that do that. But let's ask the right question and say, if and when that does happen, let's ask the question of, why did I see it and you didn't? Why did you miss that? Because that's true. Like, I, don't, I don't want people, I don't want to just say I told you so to people. And honestly, I'm praying stuff doesn't happen, but there's a lot that's happening. But my heart, and I think God's heart, is I just want people to be awake. Amen? I, want to say, I, don't, I don't care where you stand right now. I just want you to know him. Amen? And there's got to be a reason why, again, Paul, he heard God's voice. Right? And he's saying, hey, don't sail. And they're like, dude, we're not going to listen to you. At the end, Paul's like, hey, you guys should have listened to me, but, Right? I pray for us that we're never people that say, I told you so. I pray that we walk in love and grace and humility and just say, hey, I love you. I'm walking with you. And there's a, this is why I saw it. And this is why you missed it. But God's word is simple. Confess with your mouth that he is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. And he gave us his Holy Spirit so that you could hear his voice as well. Amen? Like, we need to pray that over people. Paul says this, Men, you should have taken my advice not to sail from Crete. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now, what did he say? But now, come on. But now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. 
Again, I think but now is significant and important for us today because I think even some of us in here, maybe you're in a place where you feel like there is no hope, where you feel like, God, I feel like I'm gonna be here forever. God, I'm doing all that I can, everything I know to somehow get through this storm, but God, it's just hopeless. I just wanna encourage you today, don't give up, amen? Jesus is saying to you, but now, amen? But now. He has the final say in your life. He has the final diagnosis. And even when you don't see him, even when you can't feel him, I promise he is working, amen? And he is faithful always. You might not see it in the middle of whatever it is you're facing, but I promise in hindsight, you'll always look back and be like, God, you were there all along. It's like Jacob Jacob in Genesis, it says, man, he goes back up after years of his life where God, and he says, man, I want to go back up to Bethel, the gate of heaven, the house of the Lord, where God answered me in the day of my distress, and he's been with me ever since. God is faithful, amen? And you might not see it or feel it, but I promise you, he is there. And Paul's confident in that. He puts his hope in Jesus. Why? Because he says in verse 23, last night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood behind me. Right? There's a caveat in that. Jesus, I want you to stand with me. Good. How do I do that? I make sure that I belong to him and I make sure that I'm living to serve him. Amen? He says, last night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me. And said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar. And God has graciously given you all the lives of all who sail with you. So keep up your courage, men. For I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Amen? Nevertheless, we must still run aground on some island. Whew, good news. Amen? The last thing I believe that God wants to write on our hearts today is number three, put your faith only in God and trust him that it will happen, amen? It's right there, verse 25. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as I thought it should happen, right? No. Everybody's like, yeah, 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 it's good, right? No, no, just as he told me. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith and not by sight. Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of, of God. Paul is saying no matter what you feel, no matter how hopeless it may seem, keep up your courage, amen? Don't give up, why? Because my God has the final say. Because my God is faithful and I know he's for me. Because he said that I'm going to make it to the other side. He said I can't die in the storm because I have a greater battle ahead. He said that I must stand before Caesar. So that means I'm not dying in the storm, and neither are you, amen? Come on, I have faith in who? In God, my God, and I believe, say that, I believe that it will happen just as he told me, amen? You might be in here today, and you might be like, man, I, Justin, this all sounds awesome, but I don't feel it. And if you only knew what I was dealing with in my life, you probably wouldn't be speaking. That might be your words right now. That might be your heart. And like I said earlier, maybe you're going through something that wasn't your fault. And you're hopeless right now in your life and you feel broken and you feel like there is no way this is ever gonna turn out good. I just want to yell to you today, but now. Amen? But now, I know that my God and I believe that he's faithful. I believe that he loves you, that he knit you together in your mother's womb, that he has a plan and a purpose for your life. And you might not see it right now in this moment. You might not feel it. And the storm might be raging against you. Sun and stars might be gone. Any chance of hope or light at the end of the tunnel might seem like it's impossible or hopeless in your life, gone. But I want to encourage you today, do not give Give up, amen? Continue to stand. Continue to have faith. Continue to believe because I promise you, He is faithful. 
But now, amen, when the enemy comes knocking at your door tonight before you go to bed and said, you are worthless, it's never going to change. I want you to say, but now, amen, I believe, I believe that my God is good. I believe that my God is faithful. I have faith. I'm choosing to have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. As long as you have breath in your lungs, God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen? I believe with everything in me from reading scripture that these are the last days. I really do. And I believe God's heart through reading scripture is his plan to show his light and his life and his love to the world was yes through Jesus. But in the last days it says that he wants to make it known through his church. But you and I cannot live warm and fuzzy, weak Christianity. We have to have conviction. We have to be able to stand in the face of persecution and say, yeah, throw stones. It might not make sense, but I'm choosing to believe. I'm choosing to stand in faith that my God is for me. And he's way bigger than you. Amen? His name is way greater than COVID. His name is way greater than cancer. His name is way greater than division and hatred and all the junk that's going on right now. And I believe that once again, he will come and pour out his spirit. I believe that his spirit will fall and this world will see a move of God like they never have before. Why? Because my God is faithful, amen? As I was praying and studying this week, man, uh, gosh, I don't even remember how long ago, almost two years ago, it was my birthday. Of all things, July 30th, just so you guys know, right? Um, I remember we were driving up, we are getting ready to take a vacation, we were on vacation, and it was my birthday, and I got a call from my doctor, and he just said, hey, <laughs> left me a message, he said, hey, um, so the x-ray, I was having a lot of back pain, he said, the x-ray that we saw, there's, there's a mass that's on your kidney, the upper pole of your kidney, and, you know, I need you to give me a call back. And he just said, hey, I, I, we really want to get you connected to an oncologist. And I'm like, God, what? And I started freaking out, right? We're on our way up. We were right by Sacramento going to my parents in Grass Valley. And I start Googling large mass upper pole of kidney. You know, what does that mean, right? And oh my gosh, dude, I got even more scared. You know, I was like, oh my gosh. It's cancer, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die young, I'm 30 some years old, like God. And then I remember just feeling all of that. But again, like I said, in our lives, there's gonna be stuff that we're gonna face and you're gonna be like, man, it's okay to acknowledge those feelings, but it's not okay to live there or make an agreement with them. And so I was freaking out and I said, you know what? No, God, we just planted a new work. You're, you're blowing it up, God. You're doing massive things, God. I know what you have planned for me in my life. God, I know it doesn't end here. I, and I was getting ready. I was traveling and speaking different ministries and sharing this whole idea that if Jesus said, you're going to the other side of the lake, you don't die in the middle of the storm. Amen. And so I'm like, God, I got to live this out. And so I just started speaking and said, God, I just have faith. God, I don't care. And if you do take me, then Obviously, it's my time, and I'm stoked I'm going to be with you. I'm going to do some damage from up there, right? But I was like, God, I'm not, I'm not believing that. God, you have the final diagnosis. You have the final say. And so we went through and just continued to trust in the Lord. And again, I haven't had back pain since that week. Amen? And again, I never got it rechecked. I never got anything like that. This week, as I'm preparing for this message, my doctor who retired, who I haven't heard from for almost two years, called as I'm on like the Bowflex, right? Trying to like lose the Krispy Kremes. And, um, and I get this call and so I, I was like, that's weird. And his message was, hey, I don't know if you know, I, I retired, but I just, I finally had some time to really look through your, your x-rays and your charts. And, um, you know, if you can, I just, I, I talked it over, you know, in detail today with one of the radiologists. And um, if you can just give me a call, that would be awesome. I, I definitely need to talk to you. And I'm telling you, all those things came back up. And I was like, no way I'm calling that dude. You know what I mean? Like, dude, it'd be like my dog. If I have four days to live, I'm going to eat some steaks and preach the word and call it good, right? That's a whole other sermon. But um, so I prayed. So Katie... I texted Katie and I sent her the voice message. 
you know, and I was struggling because I'm like, dude, here I am saying, God, stand in faith in the middle of the storm, and now you're going to make me live this? What's going on, you know? Um, and I just said, no way. God, I'm believing. I have faith. I'm not going down young. I'm not going down early. I know that you still have a plan and purpose for me. And so finally, I mean, it took everything in me. I was like, oh, he's probably off at five, so I'll wait till 4.59. And um, I, I called. And I was hoping I would get a voicemail. And he just picked up. And he's a believer. And he just called and said, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? I heard, you know, how's your church? And blah, 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 blah. So I just called in to check up on you. Have you had any more pain? What, whatever happened with all that stuff? You know, I, I feel like you kind of fell through the cracks. And I'm like, honestly, I never, I haven't seen a doctor since the last time I saw you, you know. Um, and I said, but, I said, I just, man, I've just been going for it. And I said, I haven't had any pain. I'm stoked. I said, I'm getting a little wider, but I feel good, you know. Um, and so he said, just praise God. He's stoked. I was just telling him again, the last couple of weeks, we have multiple people just healed, just walking in faith, you know, and people giving their lives to Jesus. And so he said, well, do we want to take other x-rays or whatever? I was like, man, I really don't. If you want me to, I totally will. I said, but I'm, I'm just choosing to believe that God's healed me. And as long as there's breath in my lungs, I'm gonna continue praising his name because I believe his word is true. His body was broken for me. It says, by his stripes, I'm healed. His blood was shed on my behalf. And so I'm believing that blood is pulsing through my veins. And I know at the end of the day, it's like Dr. D, I know at the end of the day, I know where I'm going. And I know God's got me. And he was just like, praise Jesus, you know. Man, you're, so you're meeting like real people in person. Like, is everybody six feet apart in mass and everything? I was like, no, nah, kind of, not really. Um, and he said, man, that's so encouraging to hear. And he said the same thing. He said, man, so many leaders and believers I know have just given in to the intimidation of the enemy right now. So it's so encouraging to see you as a young man standing in faith. And again, I don't say that for like, woohoo, Justin, right? We've sought the Lord and prayed. And I honestly believe there are more people watching online that are getting saved like never before that would never walk in the, in the doors of a church. But for me and my house, for this place, what God has put in our hands, we're gonna meet and believe for God to move. And again, I just wanna encourage you guys, all of that. Maybe you're in here today, it's my third close, but it's the real one, right? Um, again, may, I, I don't wanna just come in here, hear a message and leave the same. Maybe you're in here today, and we'll just keep it simple. Maybe you're like, dude, I, I was hopeless, and I just need a touch of the Savior. And I just wanna encourage you, maybe you're in here today, and it's even more real than that. Maybe you're, maybe you're living wrong in your life. And you feel convicted today of like, man, I want to live right. God, I want, I want to give you everything because I need you to do something real in my life. God, I need you, Jesus. If that's you today, I just want you to come down up front. Amen? Let's all stand. Good? Anybody? If you need a touch of the Savior, if you feel like, man, Jesus, I want to know you. I want to know your hope. I want to know your peace. I want to know your joy and your love in my life for reals. I don't want to just know about you. I just want to encourage you. Just come down so we can pray for you. Amen? Anybody? Amen. Come on. It always takes one. Come on. Amen. Good. Anybody else? Jesus, I just need you today. Amen. Somebody's heart's pounding. I feel it. I just want to encourage you, if you feel, just be brave. Amen. Don't miss out on what God wants to do in your life right now. Amen. If we can, if we can all just come lay hands on these guys, that'd be awesome.
Those of you guys out there, just extend your hands too. Let's pray this prayer together. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me. And I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. I receive your forgiveness over my life. And I believe with everything in me that God, you raised Jesus from the grave. Fill me with your spirit and use me to be your hands and feet to the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me just pray. God, I thank you for these people that came forward, God. I just ask, I speak freedom over their life right now in Jesus' name. God, and I speak to every single person in here today, God, to their circumstances or situations that might seem hopeless. God, I just say, but now today, God, over every person's life, God, who is struggling with, with just feeling hopeless today, God, I ask, Holy Spirit, God, restore, God, restore hope and joy and life in the lives of every single person here, God, and we say to today, God. We have faith in you, Jesus Christ. God, we put our hope in you, God, not upon circumstances or situations or man or systems, God. We put our hope on you alone, God, and we believe, God. We say that today in our hearts, God, over our lives. We believe that it will happen just as you said it would, God. So again, I ask right now, Holy Spirit, every single one of us right now, God, I ask, fill us with the power of your spirit today. God, make us unshakable, God, I pray. Write your word upon our hearts. Holy Spirit, give us revelation, God. May we be people that stand with boldness and confidence, God. Supernatural boldness, God, to, to stand with conviction upon your word, God. Let us fight for freedom, God. The same freedom that you died died on the cross for us, God. And we break every chain of addiction, God. Every chain, God, of, of condemnation and guilt and shame and hopelessness and addiction and oppression and depression. We say be broken today in Jesus' name. And we speak life and hope, joy and freedom in the name of Jesus, God. We bless you. And we thank you for all that you are. We love you today. And all God's people said, Amen. Come on. Love you guys. If you need prayer, feel free to come up. We will stay and pray for you and encourage you. Other than that, please join us next week. Tacos, Jesus, come on. Amen. We'll see you next week. Down at your
Amen. Come on. Oh, so come and move. Let justice rule on our river. Worship turn into revival. Lord, lead us back to you. Oh, oh, so come and move. Let justice rule on river worship turn into revival Lord lead us back to you come on say king king of all generations let every tongue and nation Amen. Come on. King of all generations, let every tongue and nation surrender all to you alone. Oh, Jesus, so come and move. Let justice rule on our career.